Pastos Biology Topics from the Study Guide Begin the last major unit of ANP1. This unit deals with the nervous system and because of its complexity I've divided it into two parts. Chapter 9 of your manual is called Cells of the Nervous System. It mainly deals with the neuron and what it does, although there's quite a bit of introduction to it. Let's begin on page 9.4 in the study guide. Now due to the complexity of the nervous system, you'll have to accept some of the ideas that I present because you need to know these to understand what comes later. And you really can't understand these ideas until you understand what comes later. We begin with a look at the two major coordinating systems of the body, the endocrine system and the nervous system. Part one in the outline compares those two. Number two in the outline is an introduction to the nervous system. Now this is a very elementary introduction. You may know this already, but it doesn't hurt to go over some of this. The nervous system has two major subdivisions. This is from an anatomical point of view. The central nervous system, and in a moment, the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system anatomically is divided into two parts, the brain and the spinal cord. This is the brain and this is the spinal cord. Now, as you'll hear me say later, try not to think of the brain as something separate from the spinal cord. They work together as a unit. So if I ask a question about a major coordinating part of the nervous system, think of central nervous system instead of brain. From a clinical point of view, the central nervous system has four parts, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the brain stem, and the spinal cord. Clinically, the central nervous system has four parts. The cerebrum, which is this, the cerebellum, the brain stem, which goes roughly from here down to here, and the spinal cord. Another general bit of information. The nervous system has two kinds of stuff in it, gray matter and white matter. We can get a view of the gray and white matter. In the cerebrum, the gray matter is a very thin outer layer, highly folded, and the white matter is the lighter colored material on the inside. In addition to that, the central nervous system is divided into two halves, a right half and a left half. In the brain, specifically the cerebrum, because the brain is a sphere, each half of the cerebrum is a hemisphere. The central nervous system is divided into two halves, a left half and a right half. Here you see the subdivision of the cerebrum into halves. Each half is a cerebral hemisphere. And finally, one other bit of general information. The cerebral cortex is the outer part of the cerebrum. It's a rather thin layer, maybe a millimeter and a half thick, but a critically important part of the nervous system. The peripheral nervous system includes two parts. Nerves, and on the next page, ganglia. I'm not going to tell you what a nerve is. You may think you know, but you probably don't. We'll come to that a little later. The nerves are attached either to the brain, we call them cranial nerves, or to the spinal cord. These we call spinal nerves. Those attached to the brain, the cranial nerves, consist of 12 pairs, most of which innervate structures in the head and neck. The exception is cranial nerve number 10. This is the vagus. This nerve and actually, although I refer to nerves singular, they're all paired, this one travels down through the thorax and through the uh, diaphragm into the abdomen and innervates various structures in the chest and abdomen. You'll learn much more about the vagus nerve in ANP2. 
Spinal nerves, on the other hand, attached to the spinal cord, are attached with two points of attachment, a dorsal root and a ventral root. Let's look at figure 9-2 to see what it looks like. This is a fairly schematic view of the spinal cord. This is the spinal cord in cross-section. In the spinal cord, the gray matter is on the inside, roughly butterfly-shaped, and the white matter is external to that. Now here are the two roots of attachment of the spinal cord. Up is dorsal or posterior, down is ventral or anterior. So this is the dorsal root, this is the ventral root. They come together to form a spinal nerve. Now in the diagram I only show one on one side, there's another one on the other side. While we're looking at this diagram, notice the bump in the dorsal root. This is called the dorsal root ganglion. You'll understand what a ganglion is a little later. There are 31 pairs of spinal nerves and they're designated based on the regions of the spinal column that you learned earlier. For example, 8 pairs of cervical nerves, 12 pairs of thoracic, 5 each of lumbar and sacral, and one pair of coccygeal nerves. The other part of the peripheral nervous system are the ganglia. I've already shown you the dorsal root ganglion. Some other important ganglia are in the abdomen. Uh, there's the celiac ganglion, the superior mesenteric ganglion, and the inferior mesenteric ganglion.